By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the um, trigonometric ratios sine, cosine, and tangent to find the missing side, to find a missing side of a right triangle. Okay? We're going to practice using um, each one. So we're going to practice using sine. We're going to practice using cosine and tangent. Then we're going to talk about, okay, when do I use sine? When do I use cosine? When do I use tangent? So um, when I look at a problem, how can I pick which one to use? All right, so sine is your opposite and hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And um, tangent is opposite over adjacent. When I was a kid, I learned this from uh, Mrs. Oh, what was her name? Stevenson. And she was a small, small black lady. She was tough as nails. She was like my favorite teacher in high school um real little but everyone's afraid of her and she had a really neat accent and she, was, she would say like hyperbola parabola trigonometric and i just thought she was the coolest teacher ever and so i still when i do sine cosine and tangent i still think of her when i do this because she taught me some old horse caught another horse Taking oats away. Some old horse, kind of the horse taking oats away. Oh gosh, I loved her. And I still, when I'm trying to think of, okay, what is cosine? I still think caught another horse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. What is sine? Some old horse. Op op opposite over hypotenuse. So I still do some old horse, kind of the horse taking oats away. Some teachers talk about uh, Sokotoa. So S O H K C A H T O A, and they call it Sokotoa. Never can re I guess I did. I only can say that when I look at it, but I know some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. All right. So when we look at a triangle, all right. So let's look at a triangle here. If you notice, um, this is actually from the formula sheet for geometry for the SOL. All right. So um, if you have an angle, and this symbol here is theta, okay? And theta is used instead of x a lot of the time when we're talking about an angle. So theta would be like an angle. It's a Greek letter and it normally represents an angle. All right, so the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? I'm just gonna make this say opposite. And again, what I mean by opposite, it's away from the angle. It's not touching the angle. Okay, so it's the opposite leg. All right, this is at my hypotenuse. All right, and then adjacent is touching the angle. The hypotenuse will always touch your angle no matter where your angle is. The other side of that angle is your adjacent leg. Okay, it's your adjacent side. So we're gonna practice using this. Okay, what do, we're gonna use sine, cosine, and tangent. When we um, um, use these again, we're going to put these in decimos. So we're going to do the sine of 21. We're going to put it in to decimos. Make sure when you do, make sure your decimos calculator is in degree mode. Okay, make sure you click on the little wrench in the upper right-hand corner, select degree mode. So if you don't have that yet, make sure you do it. Okay, so remember this comes from similar triangles so the sine of an angle is always um is the same ratio every time it's your the ratio of your opposite over hypotenuse and no matter what how big your triangle is like how long your sides are if let's say there's a 30 degree angle sitting there the ratios will be the same no matter how big or small your triangles are so let's practice using sine so here's the angle we're talking about in this one I am writing in white. Look, ooh, it's gone. Okay, let me not write with white. Okay, so here's my angle. And the reason why we're gonna use sine of this, so the sine of the angle, so sine of 21, okay, it's always the sine of the angle. So whatever is right after sine, cosine, and tangent has to be your angle. It's not a side, it's your angle, all right, equals, 
opposite over hypotenuse. So if the reason why this works with this problem is if you look, that is my opposite side, and this is my hypotenuse. Okay, it's opposite my um, it's opposite my angle. X is opposite my angle, and the hypotenuse again is that longest side. Okay, the hypotenuse should be the one that's not the L. So, opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 21 equals the opposite side when I divide it by the hypotenuse. So I can use this to find out what x is. And just like whenever we talk about similar objects, similar polygons, um, we always use proportion. So we're going to put this over 1. Okay, so whenever we're, we have a proportion where the 1 doesn't have a denominator, we put it over 1. So I say 1 times x equals 22 times sine of 21. And that's how we're going to put it in the calculus. So I guess I should have put this here. Okay. So in Desmos, I type in 22 parentheses sine of 21. Or I could even do 22 times sine of 21. And when I type that in, it'll give me what my missing side is. 7.88. So if you get your decimals calculator, and I would go ahead right now and try it, um, type in 22 times sine of 21 and make sure you get 7.8. That way you also can tell if you're in degree mode or not. All right, let's look at the next example. This is also a sine. So here's my angle. Notice this is opposite and this is my hypotenuse. And actually the way I do it is like, is the hypotenuse labeled? Yes. See, the hypotenuse has a label on it, X. The other um, side that is labeled is opposite that 63 angle. So this is what actually goes in my head. So I'm given a problem. Here's my angle. Is the hypotenuse labeled? Yes. What else is labeled? That opposite side. It's not touching the angle. It's opposite. So since we're talking about hypotenuse and opposite, then we know we're talking about sine because sine is hypotenuse over or sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. So again, it's sine of the angle equals the hypotenuse or opposite over the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is x. The opposite was 16. The hypotenuse is x. Again, if I want to solve this, put this over 1. 1 times 16 is 16. And this is going to be x times sine of 16. Three. All right. So to solve this, remember we cross multiply and divide a lot when it comes to proportions. Here comes one where we divide. We didn't have to divide on the previous one because there was a. We assume there's a one next to it, and if we divide things by one, it stays the same. So divide by the sine of 63. These cancel. Let's get x equals whatever. Six, <laughs> x equals 16 divided by the sine of 63. And you can type it in decimals just like that. 16 division sine of 63. And when you type that in, you get 7.96. Okay? So when you type that in the calculator, you type it just like that. 16 divided by a sine of 63. Because again, Sine of 63 just means it, it's a ratio. It is some sort of fraction. Okay, so the sine of 63 is just, if I have a right triangle with that, it's whatever the opposite divided the hypotenuse is going to be. So sine of 63 is the same. If I type in sine of 63 into the calculator, same number every time. And again, I can use that to find um, my missing side. Okay, so that's using sine. These next two use cosine. So here's my angle in this one. The hypotenuse is labeled. So I know um, I'm at least going to use sine or cosine. And the other side that's labeled is touching 73 degrees. So that's adjacent. So since hypotenuse and adjacent are labeled, that's how I know I'm going to use cosine and then of the angle. Okay, cosine is 63. That ratio equals x over 6. 
adjacent over hypotenuse. I get into solve, I'm going to put it over 1. x times 1 equals 6 times the cosine of 73. Type that in the calculator, you can put in parentheses, or just put the times. And when I multiply that in the calculator, I get that that side is 1.75. Again, make sure you know how to type this in just this. I don't have a screenshot of this, but you type it in just like you see it there and making sure your calculator is in degree mode. If you do this in one of the TI 84, 83 calculators, you can still type it in like that. You just, again, you go to mode in your calculator and you select degree. So it still has to be in degree mode. But I'm telling you the decimals calculator is easiest on this. All right. Next example, again, my hypotenuse is labeled. The other side of this label is touching that angle, so it's adjacent. That's why this is a cosine problem. So cosine of 72 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. The hardest problem part of the work we're gonna do today is setting it up. Once we set it up, I think you guys will be pretty good at solving them. All right, put it over one. Six times one is six and then x times cosine of 72. To solve this, I'm gonna divide by cosine of 72. Type in the calculator just like that. And I get 19.42. All right, so that side, that x is 19.42. All right, our final one we're going to talk about is tangent. And tangent is used when the hypotenuse isn't labeled. So if you notice with tangent, it's opposite of adjacent. So we're talking about the two legs, so across from an adjacent. So notice the hypotenuse is never labeled in these. This is across from the angle. This is adjacent to the angle. So when I set this one up, it's going to be tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. I'm going to put this over 1. x times 1 equals 24. That shouldn't be 24. Let me try that again. This should be a 12. Shouldn't it? I have to erase. It should be a 12. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get 12 times the tangent of 24. And when I multiply those, I get 5.34. Alright. Next one, again, hypotenuse is not labeled. So I know it's got to be a tangent. This is across from. This is attached to, so that's adjacent. Tangent is when we use opposite and adjacent. So tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Cross multiply, 14 equals x times the tangent of 49. And then I'll cross multiply and then divide. Divide by the tangent of 49. So x equals 12.17. So kind of some patterns here. We use sine whenever the hypotenuse and an opposite is labeled. We use cosine whenever adjacent and hypotenuse is labeled. And if there is no hypotenuse labeled, only opposite and adjacent, we use tangent. The other thing I'd like you to notice, when we set these up, we always put the angle with the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. The next thing to notice is when your x is on top, you're just going to multiply. And when your x is on the bottom, you're going to end up dividing. So notice that in each case as well. All right, so now what I want to do is, the, again, the hardest part of the problems you're going to do today is setting the problem up. I think once you have it set up, then we're just typing questions into decimals. So how do we choose, is it going to be sine, cosine, and tangent? So I like to do this little flow chart. This is kind of like um, when I was 
a teenager we used to have like 17 magazines and was like when is your perfect prom dress and you're like do you like the color purple yes or no and if you like yes and you go here and no you go there and I'll pick the perfect prom dress for you um some of you are like what is this woman talking about so the first question we're going to ask is is the hypotenuse labeled And I would write this down. I left a space for you to write this in. If you notice, there's like this weird white space on the top of the page. I would write, you should write this in here because this is actually pretty helpful. Okay, so we're going to talk about is it labeled or is it not labeled? Okay, so if the hypotenuse is not labeled, then all we have are the two legs, opposite and adjacent. So that is going to always be tangent. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, if the hypotenuse is labeled, the hypotenuse is labeled, now I get to decide, okay, between sine and cosine. So what else is labeled? All right, what else is labeled? Is it the opposite side? So across from? Or is it the adjacent? The side that's attached to the angle? Remember the hypotenuse is always attached. But is my other side adjacent? That is not high school adjacent. Okay, if it's the opposite, that's gonna be sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse sine of theta. Adjacent would be cosine. So adjacent over hypotenuse. All right. So again, you might want like a right triangle to kind of that's near you. So here is a right triangle. So this is always a hypotenuse. It's that side that's not part of the L. Okay, let's put our angle here. If it's touching that angle, then we're talking about the adjacent leg. If it's across from it, then we're talking about the opposite leg. Okay, so this is the system I go through as we do the problems. And as we do these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight examples, we're going to go through this process for each one of deciding what, what we're going to do in so let's look at example three here. So I'm going to look. I want to find x. So let's see what's labeled. So is the hypotenuse labeled here? It is not. Okay, so I know this is going to be a tangent. This is my hypotenuse. It is not labeled. By that I mean it doesn't have the x and the 11 there are not on that hypotenuse. Okay. They are on the adjacent because it's touching it. It's touching that 64 degree angle and the opposite. So tangent of my angle, so tangent of 64 equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, tangent is always opposite over adjacent. Again, how you set up is important. If any of those numbers aren't in the right place, you will get the question wrong. All right, put this over one. X, I'm going to cross multiply, so X times 1, 11 times tangent of 64. X times 1 is just X. Tangent, so I'm going to do 11 times the tangent of 64, and I get X equals 22.55. So that side there, that X, would be a measurement of 22.55. So again, was the hypotenuse labeled? Nope. The adjacent and the opposite were. All right, let's look at example four. All right, let's look at example four. Here's my angle. Is the hypotenuse labeled? Yes, 29 is my hypotenuse. The other side that is labeled is touching that angle, so it's adjacent. All right, so adjacent hypotenuse is cosine. So the cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Put 
this over 1. Cross multiply x times 1 equals 29 times the co too many 29s in this times the cosine of 29. And when I type that in the calculator, I get 25.36. I'm running two decimal places. I think your classwork rounds one decimal place. Your All right, so if you look at example five, again, is the hypotenuse label? It is. What else is labeled? Well, it's touching the angle, so that's adjacent. Oh, this is set up just like the one we just did. Cosine. Cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Put this over one. Cross multiply 1 times x equals 32 times the cosine of 41. And when I type that in the calculator, I get 24.15. Okay? So again, look at what's labeled. Pick your trigonometric ratio based on what's labeled. Make sure you set it up right. So if Opposite over hypotenuse, you know, make sure you have it on there. Put your trigonometric function over one and cross multiply. And then again, we'll do some examples where you have to divide as well. Okay, and that's again when the x is on the bottom. Okay, when the x is on the bottom, we'll end up dividing. Notice on the ones, all these x's on top, so we multiplied for all these. All right, example numero nine. Is the hypotenuse labeled? No, it is not. It's blank. So what is labeled is the opposite of 36 and the adjacent of 36. All right, so opposite and adjacent, tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. The x is on top, so I know I'm just going to multiply over 1 x equals 7 times the tangent of 36. All right, so 7 times the tangent of 36 is 5.09. I don't know if you guys can hear my neighborhood. It is a beautiful day, so they're all outside being goofy. So if you hear goofy people, it's my neighbors. They're all pleasant enough. All right, let's look at example 10. Here's the hypotenuse label. Sure enough. There it is, labeled with an X. What else is labeled? Um, the 12 is opposite angle 63. So I think this is our first sign when it is. So sine, because it's opposite and hypotenuse, as 63 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, the X is on the bottom. So I know I'm getting dividing, not because it's a sign, but because X is on the bottom. I know we'll do some dividing. 1 times 12 equals x times sine of 63. To solve this equation, we have to undo the multiplication. It's because we want to get x by itself. Divide by the sine of 63. These cancel. x equals 12 divided by the sine of 63. is 13.47. Like I said, I highly recommend you guys type 12 divided by sine of 63 into decimus and make sure you get that. Make sure you know how to get 13.47 because if you get something different, either more likely you have it in radians, but you're typing in something wrong. Okay. All right. Example 11. Is the hypotenuse labeled? Yep. What else is labeled? Um, let's see. Here's my angle. I, it's not touching X, so that's opposite. So sine of 15 equals x, which is my opposite, over hypotenuse, 12. This is just to be my multiplying ones. 1 times x equals 12 times the sine of 15. So x equals 3.11. All right, final two examples, I promise. Then you can do some classwork. But I want to make sure you have plenty of examples because these are a little bit harder to do. Okay, so let's look at example 9. Is the hypotenuse labeled? No. 
Here's my angle. I touched X, so that's adjacent. Opposite of that is 17. So since I didn't, my hypotenuse isn't labeled, it's tangent of 49 equals opposite over adjacent. My X is on the bottom, so now I'm going to end up dividing. 1 times 17, X times the tangent of 49. Divide by the tangent of 49 to solve, because I want to get x by itself, so I have to do on both sides. Cross, multiply, and divide. You've been doing that proportions forever. Remember, all sine, cosine, and tangent are is a ratio, part of a proportion. All right, so I get 14.78 when I divide those. And then my final example is the hypotenuse labeled yes. What else is labeled? This adjacent side. Hypotenuse and adjacent are cosine. So the cosine of 44 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Variables on the bottom, so now I'm going to end up dividing. 1 times 8 equals C times the cosine of 44. And to find C, I'm going to divide by cosine of 44. I think they're drinking. <laughs> My neighbors are doing a little drinking, a little day drinking. All right. <laughs> divide by 8 divided by the cosine of 49 is 11.12. All right. So sine, cosine, and tangent to find the missing side of a triangle. Decide if your hypotenuse is labeled. If it's not, we're tangent. If it is, if it's hypotenuse and opposite, we're sine. If it's adjacent hypotenuse for cosine, it's always sine, cosine, or tangent of the angle equals the two sides being divided. If the variables on top, you're just going to multiply. If the variables on, on the bottom, you're going to cross, multiply, and divide. Um, and that's how you find the missing side. So now what you're going to do is the maze on the next on the next bit. When you write your answers to this, I want you to write in the order that you would do them in the maze. In case remember for a maze. Whatever your answer is tells you where to go next. So when, if you write this on a separate sheet of paper, you need to put your answers in the order that you saw them. So it's easier for me to check. 